Watching Salem Gasworks, a guild of artistic sorts, the North Shore's multimedia arts and entertainment network. I'm Sarah Morno, and this is my husband Dan. How do you do? And this is our bi weekly visit with both performing and uh, visual artists in a no frills setting. And as I always say, if you're flipping the dials, don't pass gas, stay a while. Today, our artistic sorts are fine artist, photographer, and minimalist painter. Richard Warren Buckley, who's also a hell of a storyteller, so he'll be, uh, uh, we'll visit with uh, Dick a little later, but first we've got uh, uh, Krista Renee of the Krista Renee Band. She's with us solo today, and she's going to tell us about her new CD, which is Roots Dance Culture. Welcome. I got those in the right order. Thanks yeah. for having me. Oh, thanks so much. And uh, Krista plays a unique mix of reggae, soul, rock, and dance rhythms. So that's going to be a real treat. Thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know, in researching and listening uh, to your music, I found the damnedest thing. Every song I had a physical reaction. Every single song. It's, uh, I think I was listening to Just for Today and a toe tapping and the head's moving. And I'm listening to uh, Struggle and all of a sudden I'm a drummer. <laughs> that must happen at every one of your gigs, people are, right? And then uh, Mentor Rosa, I find myself getting a little, uh, little turned on. <laughs> <laughs> great vocals, great, great music. Uh, can you tell us? Is um, you know we always ask musicians the same thing. Young Krista uh, Renee is not a musician yet. Tell us about the day. Tell us about how you got started. Um. How I got started. I, I mean, I've been playing music since I was a kid. I've um, been playing piano and then guitar, although I, I wouldn't say I'm a good piano player, but it, it was like my entry into music. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing guitar since um, I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, and I really love that. I, I studied it a little bit in college. Um, and then my dad passed away, so I kind of put down music for uh, a little bit. Um, and when I picked it back up, it was with my sister. She played um, bass, and um, and we start we formed a band. I, I grew up in New Jersey and was living there at the time, and, and in New York. Um, so we started a band, um, and that's kind of how I started with um, being in a band and getting. Well, fantastic, wow. fantastic. So uh, your new CD is released. All of. Six days ago or so, right? Right, right? Yeah. And it's a Roots Dance Culture. And this is uh, your second album with yes. the Krista Renee Band? second EP. It's not a full album, unfortunately. I, I was hoping this time we could get a full mm -hmm. album together. And we have the material, definitely. Mm -hmm. If you come to our show, we could fill three hours with mm -hmm. original and some covers. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, studio time and, and all that stuff, we... Fantastic. Mm. Three hours. Yeah, you do some wonderful yeah. covers. I was looking at uh, the type of stuff you do. Is uh, uh, you've got this tremendous uh, bank of original material, but you also do some Marley, some specials, Amy Winehouse, and what do you do for Nancy Sinatra? Uh, bang bang. Bang oh, bang. Yes. Don't let me down. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, I first heard it in the movie Kill Bill, uh -huh. the, the the intro of it, and uh, movies and music. I um, something about it um, and I just fell in love with the song we do it more kind of upbeat we start it slow with just uh -huh. me playing guitar and then kick into it. I'm like one two three four yeah. and it's like oh, yeah love to fun. hear that one yeah. Yeah. that is fantastic yeah. wow I, I, I forgot that that was her you yeah. always think of her as boots I guess Cher did a version of it too yep, but she did. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah I think Nancy Sinatra's version of it well it's a powerful song for a woman to sing bang bang don't let me down you know yeah. it, it's what about um, your band is coming together? Uh, I was just reading, uh, and one thing I compliment you on, you're not all over the net. There's not this wealth of information about you. God bless you for having some privacy. <laughs> you know, bloody private internet. Private information. Yeah, it's good yeah. to be out there, but yeah, the private stuff. But still, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, and very frequently I've had guests on here and I ask them about something. They say, well, that's wrong. And I say, well, it's on the net. <laughs> it's got to be right. What about your band is coming together, uh, uh, and 
you're at the helm of this process. Uh, from what I understand, Craigslist, right? You yep. put out a yeah. Craigslist ad. Yes. That, well, so I moved up here, I was mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out. I was very much like on my own. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't in the band with my sister anymore. Like I said, I moved up here. Um, didn't know a lot of people in the community. I did, I did open mics and stuff. and. Mm -hmm. I was just like, well, how am I going to, you know, I, I'd done some solo shows and I was just like really missing having a band behind me. And the thing about the music we make and the Caribbean, it, it has to have a beat, it has to have, you know, rhythm to it. Just me playing solo while it's like intimate, it's just, it doesn't like have that powerful, danceable quality mm -hmm. to it without having the... Um, the mm. percussion and, and drums and bass behind it. So I sure. I put up an ad on Craigslist and I found my bass player and drummer and then wow. kind of on from there. So you're putting this band together and you must have seen numerous yeah. people came to audition. Were there some who just couldn't pull off Caribbean? Um. <laughs> <laughs> you're just not Caribbean? Um. Thinking about the auditions for what was it, the commitments in that Irish uh, film where they show up and people yeah. are just oh boy. <laughs> what are your influences? Madonna, Slam. <laughs> <laughs> they were putting an R and B band together and yeah. they figured out. Yeah, I remember that. Did anybody just show up and you're just not gonna? I I want to say it kind of really just fit from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I I would say I had more of that experience when I was in. New Jersey with my sister and we were looking for a replacement drummer and that like yeah it, it was very difficult to find um, but I'm very fortunate to have mm -hmm. found and luckily enough on Craigslist like mm -hmm. really professional um, very talented and very dedicated musicians that that play with me enjoy what I what the music that I write and and want to wow. play so. Fantastic. fantastic so who are some of your band members um, so we have Pete Gustafson on bass. Mm -hmm. um, he's also in a band in Manchester called Scalawag. We have uh, Jeff Costello. He's up from Keene um, on drums. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Ryan, um, he plays uh, percussion. He lives all the way in Connecticut. And then Josiah Erickson on keys. And he lives in Winchester, New oh, Hampshire. So hard we're to like practice. all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Um, we usually rehearse like if I have a new song, if there's mm -hmm. a big show that we're worried about, but like mm -hmm. I said, they're very like they quick mm -hmm. with the uptake, so they That's get great. it pretty quickly, and really and yeah, I'm yeah. Just yeah, very fortunate with great. that. Great. So I was listening to your album. Tell me about Lovesick, which you released as a single, right? Uh, what's the? You must have. There must be something special about this song to release as a single. Um, well, so I released it on Valentine's Day because mm -hmm. I felt Lovesick. It was just you know. Mm -hmm marketing yeah. trying to think of it that way um i wrote it for my wife um uh i don't know i, I had been like i said when i moved up here i got into this relationship it mm -hmm. wasn't the best actually i wrote mentirosa about that ah. particular relationship uh -huh. and when i met my wife you know just coming from that and the baggage and like just feeling not worthy yeah. and and meeting someone i thought was so special and and awesome and I just I wanted to write this song to her and I wanted to release it yeah. as kind of like a valentine to her. Oh, okay. Very Wonderful. Nice. And we're going to hear that one today I think. Right? I think both of them. Yes. yes. Yeah. Both yeah. of them. So you'll see that contrast yeah. of yeah. emotions here. And yeah. Menti Rosa that turn on song. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to contain myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, what about um, boy it's funny I, I, I see that you're covering uh, sort of Sting and the police as well right? Is, uh... We do um, we do a, a version of voices. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of vocals on that song, but it's a good song to like jam out. And the band like mm -hmm. is very like I said skilled. So Josiah at one point and I will go back and forth him on the keys and we'll mm -hmm. echo each other. And it's really good um, dance wise. We kind of mm -hmm. we changed it up a little bit. And we do that a lot with our the uh, covers that we do. We kind of change it up to fit what we do and make it like more original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you do a lot of outdoor festivals? Because that Caribbean sound is really meant to be, I'm remembering a wedding that I was at in the Caribbean years ago and to hear it outside. Yeah. Do you do a lot of outdoor, um, outdoor festivals? We're, yeah, that's yeah. like definitely on the list of want to do. And we have, we did, we've done the Keen Music Festival. We're doing the um, International uh, Creative Arts and Ideas Festival down in Connecticut. Okay. In, um, mm. Great. So. 
we're we're trying to get out there for that because yeah. I yeah I do think that we would really see if we can get that. you up here for some outdoor yeah. festivals. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Great. We had a chat earlier uh, before the cameras were rolling, and this always happens. Something really interesting comes up <laughs> that you didn't plan on. Uh, tell me about Mr. Lever, one of the songs on your uh, on the current album. So Mr. Lever, I wrote. Um, I I work during the day. My day job um, mm -hmm. is as a case manager uh, for a foster care agency, um, and I also before that worked at a residential program, also connected with that, and just experiencing just the tragedies and the hardships of life that people go through, mm -hmm. especially these young boys um, and not having a father in their life, mm -hmm. and then finding that they're repeating the same patterns. And so I wrote Mr. Lever um, ab about that, um, mm -hmm. not having a father, and then sure. um, kind of mm -hmm. following the same footsteps. Fantastic. Yeah. There's no yeah. artist on here with a dull story. No, <laughs> there, no. There there's isn't. always a fascinating <laughs> dull. Yeah. So uh, we talked about where to find you. Reverb Nation, certainly they can find your gigs, but also uh, you've got a website, which is... Uh, Krista Renee Band dot com. Yes. Right. And uh, if we so you can find play dates in both those places, I believe. Uh, to book you, uh, a smart club owner would do what? Um, they would either contact the main website or uh, go through Linda Soma at Ironic. She does the booking on the North Shore. Okay. And um, uh, Seacoast area. So. Linda Soma, yeah. yeah. And Ironic Music. Grace. Ironic music, yeah, so yeah. they'd mm -hmm. find that on it, and we'll scroll a website. Uh, piece of trivia for you: Linda Soma and I went to high school together. Really? Yeah. Last time I saw her was last day of senior year in chemistry class or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Small the, world. The lab got out, yeah. and so we're seniors. We're out of here. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. I can't so wait to play. hear. She's yes, she play, is. So she is. Yeah, we'll excited. be back. We're gonna cut to something for a moment, and then we'll come back and hear Krista Renee. Thanks, Thanks for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Ladies and gentlemen, Krista Renee. Uh, this is called Just for Today. Can we ever be happy? Can we ever just be okay? Can we ever be happy? Just for today, can we ever be happy? Can we ever just be okay? Can we ever be happy? Just for today. I want what you 
got, yeah, I want what you got, I get it. And I climb to the top, always eyes to the top, can't forget it. Can we take this a day, yeah, take this a day, you'll regret it, you'll regret it. From my dreams, but it's more than it seems. It's a fight. And I start to compare, but that gets me nowhere. Only ifs and only mites. We got one life to live, yeah, one life to live. Live it right, live it right. Forever man, in God forever. Mm -hmm. In God forever, forever man, in God forever. Mm -hmm. In God forever, forever man, in God forever. Mm -hmm. In God forever, forever man, in God forever. Mm -hmm. In God forever, forever man, in God forever. Mm -hmm. This road will lead you to a night. This road will leave you living there. This road will lead you to a night. This road will leave you living there. In God forever, forever man. In God forever. In God forever, forever man. In God forever. So ashamed 
This next song is Mentirosa, means liar in Spanish.
she's waged Matty Rosa lies to herself True the passion she trade for wealth Lies to keep you haunted Lies to keep you low Lies to keep you haunted Lies to keep you low Here we go Trying you try, you can't keep me afraid Trying you try, you don't hold my heart anymore Trying you try, you can't get your own way Trying you try, you don't hold control anymore Trying you try, you can't keep me afraid Trying you try, you don't hold my heart anymore Trying you try, you can't get your own way Trying you try, you don't hold control anymore Rosa, mentirosa, 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 mentirosa. Watching Salem Gasworks, and that was Krista Renee. Uh, welcome back. Uh, Dick Buckley is here, Richard Warren Buckley. Oh, thank you. And music is a big part of, of your world, too. I know that uh, just recently visiting you in your studio, you had um, Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings mm -hmm. playing in the background. You paint a lot with music. I do. You do. I do. I meditate with music as well. Yeah. yeah. Music is important. I've been. Uh, in the past, I've done a lot of work with uh, Salem Jazz and Soul Festival. And mm -hmm. uh, there were individual performances with the Berkeley uh, Summer Series. And yes. it's really, I just enjoy music. Yeah. So we've, we've seen, I think, a lot of uh, people in the community are probably familiar with your work because of the Jazz and Soul Festival. Um, what I love about your work is just how intimate you are with the musicians and capturing them in that very... Uh, that transcendent moment. Musicians are great that they way. Are. Yeah, they, they are. They really are. It's yeah. like, I know I've, I've spoken to you before about capturing images and uh, capturing musicians is, is wonderful because you see who they are. Yes. Uh, and and I've, I've also mentioned to you that uh, photographing women is good because they're accessible when you point a camera at them. Uh -huh. Men are not that easy. What do we do? We hide. It's that with crossing the arms, <laughs> holding a microphone in front of you, you know, saying, yeah. <laughs> holding a script. Yeah, okay. You know, you know, hiding behind things. That would things. be me. <laughs> you know, hiding behind things. Well, I have one here, too, and I'm going to backtrack just a minute because we haven't properly introduced you. So we are visiting with Mr. Ror uh, War Richard Warren Buckley, and he's a fine artist and photographer. Um, he's an award-winning artist and minimalist painter. And uh, we're here to really talk about what you've been doing recently. Um, I know that uh, your work has been exhibited in lots of galleries, art fairs, museums from Boston to LA. And uh, as well as your words and images have been uh, featured in advertising and um, marketing, periodicals, annual reports. So uh, you're, you've got that left brain, right brain. You're the artist with kind of both sides of the brains working. Um, so uh, on a good day, yeah, yeah. on a good day. <laughs> so um, 
uh, we are going to be talking about your uh, recent work, your Essence series, and seeking out the essence of your subjects, minimalizing the physical to capture core energy, which we will be talking about soon. But before that, um, I want to just backtrack a little bit and talk about your journey to where you are now. Um, when did you see yourself as an artist? Was it something that you knew early on? I, uh, I think the first thing I did uh, when I, uh, I was born was ask for crayons. Yeah. You know, my father was very disappointed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it was, as he had a, he had a, he had a, uh, a disdain for the arts and oh, artists. Really? Yeah. And he would not, I could not, he would not really let me draw if he was in the house. Really? And he was a he was a traveling salesman, so I could draw during the week. It'd be home on weekends. Uh -huh. and weekends I couldn't draw. Okay. Did you have a a baseball mitt or something that you picked up just to you know please him a little? Yes, and he would fire that ball at me so my hand hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, he had uh, he just did not think the arts were important. Uh, hmm. the, yeah. the the visual arts. He liked sure. music. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, he liked Dixieland. He liked uh, he liked. Uh, uh, big band music, mm -hmm. uh, but the arts was something that uh, had didn't hold much interest in my mother, my mother, my wife, mm -hmm. his wife, my mother. At one time, uh, got him to go to the BSO. Mm -hmm. His comment was, uh, "All the fiddle players got their bows to go up and down at the same time. It was amazing. <laughs> that was that was that was what he got out of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he had uh, no interest in the in the arts whatsoever, and uh, so I would." Uh, I would draw when he wasn't around, mm -hmm. and uh, he died when I was 12. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, but that message sort of stayed with me that the arts were not a vital thing. It was always uh, on the undercurrent. It was not a worthwhile pursuit. Mm -hmm. uh, I was my high school's first and only art major in, uh, in Arlington. Okay. And they didn't know quite what to do with me. You know, so. mm. But it was yeah. like, it was interesting. You know, it's like, it was, uh, it was, I can recall, uh, here I was in Arlington High School. I took football very seriously. I was a football player. So my father took football seriously. Yeah. That's what he did take seriously. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, ended up playing football. And uh, I would hit go home at the end of the, at, after practice, I'd want to get out of there and get home and uh, watch Alan Watts on public television talk about Zen and Zen brush painting, a Sumai painting. And meditation, and I could not tell my fellow players that it was bad enough. I was the high school's only art major, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. well rushing home to. Yeah. I could uh, see the. Hey guys, I got to leave now. I got to <laughs> go home and uh, watch a program on uh, on meditation. What'd you, know? you tell them you were going to do instead? I got to do homework. Oh. Ah. Yeah, okay. I got to get home and do some homework. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I could not I could not do that, which built a kind of a, a schism in personality. You know, it was like one point I'm I'm here the tough guy, and the other time I'm home home. <laughs> wow! So really, swimming yeah. against the current. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. yeah so it was uh, it was interesting. So yeah. how how about um, photography? When did you get interested in photography? Uh, my father died. I had an uncle who gave me uh, a darkroom equipment when I was twelve. Okay. And I'd always liked uh, the little brownies and taking the pictures, but when when he gave me that, I started processing film when I was twelve. Well, mm -hmm. and, and printing my own film when I was 12, contact printing, and then in a larger, and then I, uh, I saved up my money from shoveling snow uh -huh. and cutting lawns, and I bought a, uh, a Leica A. Uh, then there was no internet to buy it on, so I had to buy it on, on uh, as a, from a print ad out of New York. <laughs> I bought a Leica A for $25, which was a huge investment for me. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, but it was my introduction to 35 millimeter photography with, uh, with fairly fast film that I could use, and I started pushing film and, Mm -hmm. uh, high school yearbook, they thought I was going to be a photographer. That's what they, they thought, because yeah. I, would, I would always have the camera with me. At football games, too? Uh, at, well, it, Catching yeah. Catching the action after, shots, after, yeah. Oh, it had to be the football game. That's okay. Game. <laughs> after, after I get hit in the head and got a concussion in my senior year. Oh, <laughs> boy. They wouldn't okay. let me play anymore, yeah. then I could take pictures of the game. Okay. So it's, that's when I started shooting in, in sports. So what was the leap into advertising? Um, when did that come? That came in, uh, in art school. Okay. It came in art school because I was able to uh, suddenly, if it was in advertising, it wasn't art, and I could satisfy this this thing that my father had that art was not a worthwhile pursuit, but business was the thing to do. He had a course for me that included me going to Belmont Hill uh, School, uh -huh. uh, which I didn't want to go to because none of my friends went there, 
and then uh, going into Harvard and going to Harvard Business School. That was the plan? That was his plan. Okay. So the business school was, was part of it because that's what he thought was really the, the thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that sort of satisfied his business thing, because advertising was business. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also was, it also looked interesting, and it could be fun, and I could involve art in it, so I could bring art into it. Okay. So uh, out, of, uh, out of school, my first job was as an art director. As an art, and where was that? That was at a, a realtor out in Natick. It was uh, Martin Cyril and Cyril Perini. Okay. And uh, I, I think one of the reasons that they hired me is I looked like the owner's son. Mm -hmm. I looked, it looked like we looked like brothers. Yeah, which had some advantages. So the first job I had from was going down to uh, West Palm Beach, uh, where they were building the first all-black housing community in America. They had never done anything, nothing like this had been done before. Okay, and I did not know at the time that what they were doing was filling in the Yogi Chobi swamp and building and <laughs> building, building on building oh. on top of it. Yeah, wow. so mm -hmm. uh, my job was to go down there and promote it. Okay. And uh, so I went down there with a uh, follower who was a photographer, mm -hmm. and uh, we put together the advertising, and it was very, very, it was very different, let's put it that way, to mm -hmm. go from business in New England back then. This is in 1959, mm -hmm. going down to Florida, mm -hmm. where things were in my at, at West Palm Beach, where things were very slow. Yeah. Like sure. They, they didn't work quite the same. No, I've noticed, I've been in the South where you get the, on a really hot day, you get the finger wave behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah. So I can't help but watch mm -hmm. Mad Men and think of and not think of you. And I want to ask you: Was Mad Men? So now we're in, I think, the third year. Is it the third year of uh, Mad Men? I forget. They're deep in deeper into the '60s, and the climate has changed quite a lot. Um, at uh, in in Mad Men in the office, what was it like to be in advertising in the '60s? It was a time to be there. Yeah. But it was a time to be there because suddenly I could stop wearing a new three-piece suit every uh -huh. week. And uh, a different suit every day. Yeah. And suddenly you start wearing a work shirt and jeans. Mm -hmm. Go a little work, facial work, hair. Go the facial hair. And uh, when an, a tour would come through the agency, you'd have people, you'd kind of an account executive, bring a tour through the agency. And this is the creative department. Uh -huh. And I remember one day a guy came into the creative department and said, do you people really take LSD? <laughs> I said, only on weekends, sir. Oh, no, <laughs> when I'm doing your work, I'm on my game. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like they, they exhibited you as some manner of zoo animal. See how oh, creative exactly. they are? Oh, it was just, just what it was like. Yeah. It was just, just what it was like. Really? Yeah. So, but you've also been a teacher. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your teaching experience. Uh, I enjoyed teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, enjoyed the administration of the schools. It's a different story. Yeah. Uh, when advertising, I could if if you you could prove you were right, mm -hmm. if whatever you did was successful, made money, mm -hmm. accomplished its marketing Bottom objective, line. whatever yeah. it was. In uh, academia, it, you could not uh, just introduce something and it, it, because it was a great idea, you had to have the right initials after your name, mm -hmm. series of initials, not mm -hmm. just two or three, you know, but a series of initials after your name. Yeah. And then you could be listened to seriously. Uh, yeah. So they, but, uh, when I first, when I first, uh, first place I taught was uh, the New England School of Art in Boston. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the first instructor that they hired who had a beard and long hair. He had down it here. I've and, seen pictures. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was not wearing a, uh, a jacket and tie to, uh -huh. to work. And I was the first instructor they hired uh, that, that fit this model. Yeah. Wow. And uh, the president of the school called me in one day and he said, uh, um, Mr. Buckley, he said, I'm going to make you uh, a department chair. I said, why might that be? I've only been here for like, uh, like three months, you know, mm -hmm. just one semester. He, because I know if I make you a department chair, I used to pick the year is like 1960, Eight or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. He said, "Have you seen pictures of uh, at Columbia University with students sitting in the president's chair? Because I know if I have you as a department chair, that's not going to happen. Don't either. leave us alone." <laughs> <laughs> so instead of oh, saying "get yeah. a haircut, hippie," what they said is, "Let's let's put this use to good this use." Guy. Right. That's exactly. Yeah. That's clever. That's clever. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to talk because I know we always run out of time, and I really want to talk about your your most recent work, your minimalist essence series. 
where you are working directly with the medium. And can you talk to us a little bit about how you came to that journey about of removing the obstacles between the artist and the artist's expression? Do you know what I'm talking? What if I said no? No, you don't want no, to. No, okay. no. So we can talk about no. gardening. No, no, no. <laughs> no I, uh, that happened. Uh, that was a that evolved. Yeah. And uh, if I were to attribute to one thing, it was a conversation uh, I had with one point with a, a very brilliant German woman uh, by the name of Renata Vock. Renata Vock. Renata Vock, uh-huh. and. Um, she at one point, we were talking about art, and at one time she uh, gave me a book she thought I should read. And it was a, a book uh, about a, uh, a German who was going to Japan with his wife. His wife was going to study flower arranging, and he was going to study uh, Zen archery. Mm-hmm. And uh, started, he, started, he started to study Zen archery, and he started doing as we, as Westerners do, we learn through emulation, we do what other people do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he was wonderfully emulating the instructor until the instructor realized he was simply being emulated and it wasn't coming from within. Yeah. Instead, he was just emulating the motions and making it look like it. And uh, she felt that my art should be coming more from within rather than emulating what I saw without. Mm-hmm. And it got me back into something I had done as a teenager, I tried to do as a teenager, and that's meditation. And meditation comes back. And yeah. meditation came back, and I suddenly was able to accomplish what I could never accomplish earlier in meditation. I could, I remember the first time I successfully meditated, I was, uh, of all places, I was sitting at, uh, at, M- at McLean Hospital, mm-hmm. uh, where I had been an inpatient. My mm-hmm. art got very dark, incidentally, in yeah. the room, and I had to make a, a break from it. Yeah. Uh, and it had been it had been dark for like three or four years. Gallery stopped handling my work because it was so dark. They, mm. they wouldn't take it. Uh, they said no one wants dark things like that on their walls. That point to like museum work. Sure. They said, well, they don't have to sell their work. We have to sell our yeah. work. We do not want depressing things on sure. our wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this was this was the, where the break really occurred. I was meditating on a dewdrop on a clover leaf, mm-hmm. and I had the sudden awareness that. I was connected through that dewdrop to the clover leaf to planet Earth and all the people on it. The oneness. Uh, yeah, the mm-hmm. oneness. The oneness started to happen, and I suddenly went from this isolation I had been in, increasing isolation, a lot of it thanks to drugs and alcohol. Yeah. To I'll point out. It's an unfortunate part uh, of the, a yeah. lot of artists' journey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, uh, so I wanted the reason I drank and drugs is I didn't want to feel. Yeah. And eventually I couldn't. Yeah. That's what it came down to. I could not feel. I could not even feel if my own work was good or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but suddenly th- it all started to come back through meditation and the spiritual connection that had been gone for years opened up mm-hmm. and uh, I would bend rather like a, a leaf on a tree thinking I was running the cosmos instead yeah. of realizing I was connected to it mm-hmm. and I was interdependent on it mm-hmm. so when this opened up to me my work started to change and instead of relying on uh, my experience my, instead of relying on my education mm-hmm. and my intellect to paint, it started to come from elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things I did along the way is I put down a paintbrush, and now most of my paintings are actually finger paintings. Really? Yeah. 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 He literally does them with yeah, his they're, hands. They're, they're no done brush. with my hands. No brush. Oh. They're done after meditation, and uh, they're done in, some of them are done in three or four minutes. Others, are, I'll come back, I'll let it dry and come back and, and, and reapproach it. Oh. Uh, I've had people say, well, how long did it take you to do that? And I'll say, 75 years. You know, so yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you, how long it's taken the life journey to do it. Well, do you find it's like, uh, it's after a meditation, almost like a dream where you have to jot down quickly, you have to... It comes out. Yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah. It yeah. comes out. Yeah. It wow. comes from within. It's not not an intellectual process. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, do you set... I'm curious about, about the process. I think a lot of people are curious about the process, and maybe it's different for each one, but do you um, always have a canvas ready so that in case that inspiration comes, you can immediately move to the canvas? Uh, the med- meditation can take different directions. Okay. Uh, so there's usually is a board or a canvas nearby, mm-hmm. and paint nearby. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Although I've, I've come to the point now where I, I no longer just dip my hand into the paint bucket. I actually mm -hmm. use plastic gloves. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that gets messy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, what do I do with my hands covered with paint? I can't pick up the canvas. You, know? you can't pick it. Okay. No. Yeah. You can't, can't do other things. You know? yeah. Yeah. <coughs> now, what about the couple series that uh, that you've been doing recently too, where it's still very much it has that kind of zen, simpli <coughs> zen simplicity? Well, these, <coughs> excuse me. These I. <coughs> I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, finger paintings. I actually paint just using the tube. <laughs> Take the tube Directly. of paint. Directly. Yeah, and it's done. Yeah. What's amazing to me when I see that, though, is people, yeah, right. But you capture, you capture, I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of skill to be, have that kind of courage and, you know, to be able to work directly with a tube like that. I've, I've lived with artists and, uh, you know, to trust your your gestures and your strokes that much to be able to just work yeah. directly. We have, to, we have to put aside our critics, young lady. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair, even fair the one, enough. Even the one within. Yeah. We have to put aside our critics. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a journey getting there. It, it, it is a journey getting there. You get, uh, I'm made uh, mindful of uh, the philosophers who, who talk about uh, Traveling through whatever to get to the end goal, you know, mm -hmm. you get. Uh, oh my goodness! Nam Yang Ho Run De Kyo, going rising from the. Yeah. The so we have to we have to travel. The sludge now, to, to get, get to there. The I'm not cultured. I don't know what these people are talking about. <laughs> I never heard of any of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, your work Good is. Good thing Sarah is, ran this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I I love your work. In fact, I was inspired recently because I I have a blog um, that I do on interior design, and and one day I just was looking at your website, and I thought I know a whole bunch of environments that could use your work, and I found all these. Um, environments uh, in home interiors that are very different but at the same time could use that place of rest that your work has within it, a place of rest. I, I, I could never get tired of looking at your work. It, do, it does do that. There is a, re, you know, like I was saying earlier to Krista Renee, I always feel something when I listen to your music. I always feel something when I look at your, your work. It kind of a, there is a kind of a calming influence mm -hmm. like the, the, the sort of the Asian influence mm -hmm. stuff we talked mm -hmm. about earlier. It makes me stop and actually look at it. And, yeah. You know, How about the core? Talk to us about the core. So, so for people who will are, are, are just tuning in and will we'll see that little red dot. Can you talk to us <laughs> about the red core? Oh, yes. That's the energy core. The energy core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, that the, the red dot is the energy core of, uh, of the work. Yeah. Uh, where it emanates from? Yeah where, the, yeah, where the energy all emanates from. That's where the work emanates from is that, that red dot. Yeah. Uh, I just and I it uh, the placement of the red dot. One I had one artist tell me, it must take you longer to figure out where you're putting the red dot than it does take the rest of the painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it does. It does. Yeah. It's like because what happens is the red dot is an integral part of it, and the B, my signature, is part of it too. Yeah. It's like all all part of it. Yeah. And to get the intellectual process out of it um, is sometimes challenging. You know, to say uh, well, intellectual to make a decision yeah, yeah. versus allowing versus just, it to just allowing it, allowing it to happen yeah. and uh, allowing it to happen has become the, the vital thing to me just uh, allowing this this work to develop as it's going to it doesn't always work uh -huh. and I can tell when it's not always working when I start it and I haven't my meditation has not been clean hmm. you know mm -hmm. my meditation has not been clean when it's been distracted. Mm -hmm. I cannot force this process, is what it comes down to. Yeah. I cannot say, well, I've got to get a painting done, like a piece of commercial work that I always used to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, used to, I used to characterize people. When I was teaching, I'd characterize the, uh, you know, the yin and yang symbol? Yes. The, yeah. the part black, part white with an S shape through it. Mm -hmm. I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, what we do if we put two lines through the middle of that, we get a dollar sign in the middle. And that's commercial yeah. art, folks. Yeah. Part experimental. And yeah. pot really nothing but commerce. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. Alas, they're giving us the wrap it up sign. I well, gotta ask, was this red accent a conscious choice today? Your pocket square. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, I was say, yeah. Really? It yeah. was. Uh, it wasn't a. It was a conscious choice. It a was, red element. Yeah, it was the only 
one I grabbed when I came with oh, the really? top of the deck. That's as conscious as it gets. Oh, my goodness. Red, you're both wearing pocket two pocket squares. squares. Yeah. Yeah. I, had choice. I had choice. I had red or yellow. I said, no, red. Yeah. Red. I, Very it nice. seems to be your thing. Yeah. yeah. So we have to make sure that people know where to find you. Yeah. Where are all the different places people can find you? Uh, they can find me at North Shore Artists. That's plural, dot org. North Shore, Shore Artists. Artists. Dot Artists org. Dot dot org. org. And that is the uh, portal to two other websites. To everything. Right. To everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we also, you have a photography website, your fine art, and it's yeah. all through this energy yep. core yep. that we will find you. And hopefully everyone will drop by and see the work in the Arts Festival, Marblehead Arts Festival. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you've got work, uh, you've got, um, you've got some nine pieces. pieces that, nine there, pieces. If there are any of them accepted. At the Marblehead Arts, Marblehead Arts Festival, Festival, which is... July 4th weekend. July 4th okay, weekend. Yep. Fantastic. Great. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. with us. Thank you. This was a delight. A yeah. real pleasure. Thank a you. A real pleasure. We enjoyed ourselves so much, and I really, really love to watch your, you know, for your photography and your art. Every time I see one, it, it is a distinct, it's a Buckley. Yeah. Well, thank you. This is a dip. Yeah. I mean, does the audience realize what a great voice you've got? <laughs> He does. He really does. Really. This oh, you both is, do. Somebody yeah. told me I should read the news. Actor, comedian, Don Rickles anyway, died today. So sign us off. We're going to go. That voice of and yours. we'll see you next time in a few weeks. Thanks again, Dick. Thank you. Enjoyed Thank it you. so much. I did kiss. Not